cheap is cheap, right? Um, but we have to be willing to kind of walk away from the money at times and hold our ground, right? Um, hold true to what we believe in and, and where we stand. And, you know, sometimes that's difficult and sometimes you're walking away from money. In this video, we're gonna talk about, you know, ways to really know and understand your customer. I think it's an important thing, um, you know, it's something to think about in the startup phase, but then for sure later on down the line as you've built a business, you've got some revenue, you've got some clients and you've got some employees, there's kind of is this pivot in really knowing your customer and what it means for you in the, in the long game, right? It's a short-term pain for a lot of long-term gains and it's a really important pivot to make. Uh, and learning to say no uh, while knowing your customer. I'm Steven Taylor, this is Weekly ST. For the last 10 years, I've been building a couple million dollar cybersecurity IT support company here in Chicagoland. And I'm also fascinated with living a wholly successful life. We talk about this every single week and more. Please like, share, and subscribe. I think in the beginning of business, you have to take on every customer, right? You, you, you're probably, you know, just hungry for the business. You're going to take on any customer that has a paycheck or, you know, is going to give you a paycheck or whatever it might be. And you're willing to bend over backwards and do whatever needs to get done, right? In the start of um, my business, right? I would run over to your grandma's house and I'd fix her computer for 50 bucks. And I might have driven an hour and a half to go do that work. Uh, certainly now as you gain stature and clients and you're busy, you know, then you can really start to choose who you're working with and how you're working with them. And it's an important thing because I think if you're still years later bending over backwards or running around or doing all these things and you're not really staying in your lane and you're not focused, it's gonna take you away from your core business and being able to better serve your good customers and things like that. If if we were always running around putting out fires of, you know, the next prospective customer with another server down, right? We wouldn't be able to better serve our customers. And so we've taken the stance, a hard stance that says, you know, somebody calls us out of the blue and says, hey, we've got an issue or our server's down or this or that or whatever it might be. Uh, we will usually 99% of the time turn them away unless it's somebody that we've been in a prospective sales meeting with or they have our proposal or things like that. You know, then maybe we'll kind of say, hey, we're, we'll help save you, but we're going to need on the back end of this a signed agreement to be able to move forward. And it's, you know, saying no is hard sometimes, but I think it's it's also, I, I can attribute it to our growth as well, because if we were running around at the beck and call of anybody who needed us, we would not be as efficient. We would not be as profitable. We would not be as able to serve our customers who do pay us every single month uh, if we were forced to run around and put them on the back burner because of you know today's emergency, especially in the technology realm. And so I think it's hugely important to really know who your customer is and really be willing to say no to anything else that doesn't make sense. You know, another area where I think that's really important is, you know, if the prospect or if a potential client wants to design their own program, we really have a narrow focus that says we only work with customers who uh, appreciate technology, right? They don't look at it as a budget line item. Uh, they're typically a growing organization, not one that's just flat or complacent. Uh, and we only will work with them on a monthly all-inclusive basis. And we do not allow them to do a a la carte menu as far as, well, I want this, but I don't want that, or I don't want this. This is our plan. This is the way that we do things. And if you're willing to abide by that or get on board with it, then we're willing to work with you. And so we oftentimes are interviewing prospects and in the sales meetings looking for you know things that go against that so that we can say, hey, you know, I just don't think this is going to be a fit. Let's go find you. You know, there's hundreds of other IT companies who are going to do your break fix work or, you know, kind of a cheaper, you know, a la carte model or, you know, pick and choose or however you might want to term that. It's just not for us. And I'd much rather pass them down the line because I've learned over the years that if we try and mold or blend ourselves to meet what they need and want or the way they want to dictate the services, 
then we're really doing them a disservice anyway because we're not fully protecting them. They're not taking our recommendations and they're trying to be in charge of IT when really that should be you know, our professional recommendations and our responsibility, right? To ensure that they're safe and well taken care of. And so it was harder years ago uh, when I first started to do this, but now I feel like I've gotten to a point where I'm very quick to find out, you know, we'll do a quick 15 minute phone call with a prospective customer or they're calling in and, hey, we've got seven computers. Can you just come over and make the server go faster? You know what? No, but here's another local company, you know, that's in your area that they'll probably be able to do that and work for you just fine. We've developed this program actually based on what the clients want, need, and alongside of our recommendations, right? So we, we're honoring them and what they've been asking for, right? They wanted simple billing, right? They didn't want to get nickel and dime. Okay, well, cool. We'll do all inclusive, right? They wanted a team member who they could call and, they, and somebody that would pick up the phone and somebody they could talk to, right? So we developed fast and friendly support that answers the phone all day, every day. And then our recommendations and our need to be cybersecurity focused really is the third tenant of our business. So we've honored our clients and our prospects all along the way. And we developed it that way because it works best for them. It works best for us, but you're absolutely right. When we bend or we break or we give in to that model, it usually becomes a shit show and it's not good for anybody involved, not our team, not us as an organization and our profitability or our you know, um, responsiveness, right? And it's not good for them because you know, we didn't put in a good backup service or we let them use the firewall they already had, but it doesn't mirror the way that we do things with every other customer we have. You know, one of the biggest reasons for our efficiency and efficiency is in this industry is having a standard stack across every single customer. And I talk with other you know, IT shops all the time and they're like, well, how do you get compliance? How do you get every customer to, to buy the same one that um, you want them to have? Well, don't sell it to them, bring it as a part of your service, right? And standardize all the way across. Your team's more efficient. They only have to deal with one vendor for that particular product. You know, it's better for the clients because they're standardized all across the board. Everybody kind of follows that same model. And it's a win-win for everybody involved. So, you know, stick to the plan, so to speak, and it'll pay you dividends because, you know, you'll be a more efficient organization as well. Another piece of this really is, you know, in knowing your market, you know, we have a few different niches. We work in a bunch of different industries. It keeps us fresh and on our game, but we also know and understand those different industries or those different styles of organizations like nonprofits, right? And so we can help them navigate, you know, tech soup or better nonprofit discounts, right? We understand their budgeting and their board meetings, right? And so it's important to really speak your customer's language, know what their needs and, and kind of their rules of the game are. And then you're able to not only better support them, but better engage with them and, you know, have a better sales conversation because they go, okay, wow, these guys really understand where we're coming from as well. I think it becomes hard, right? We, when we are out there hustling and starting our business and growing our business, we go after any piece of revenue, right? And later on, I believe you've got to learn to start to say no. And it's totally unnatural at that point because you've built this this model of hustle and go get whatever you can. And so you have to really be willing to say no. And it seems to always work out, right? I've had prospects that, you know, we stuck to our guns. We said, this is the way it's going to be. They went with a different provider, right? They said, well, you know, we want something that's cheaper. They came back a year later, right? They realized that cheap is cheap, right? Um, but we have to be willing to kind of walk away from the money at times and hold our ground, right? Um, hold true to what we believe in and, and where we stand. And, you know, sometimes that's difficult and sometimes you're walking away from money. So I think the sit rep, the question is, you know, have you clearly defined really what they call your avatar client? You know, the person that you're going to focus on, you know, you know their psychographics, their demographics, all that kind of stuff. And then you can, you know, focus all of your sales and marketing efforts on that one particular customer.